الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده ما بعد um, <coughs> I believe it was maybe last week or week before um, I had mentioned briefly um, about benefiting from the and I talked about uh, something that Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala he mentioned uh, and I've been meaning to uh, bring the book in <coughs> um, for a number of days now um, but this book here uh, it's called Al Fawaid. Called Al Fawaid. Al Fawaid is the plural of uh, Fawaid is the plural of Fa'ida, and a Fa'ida is something that is beneficial. So uh, Ibn Al Qayyim rahimahullah Taala he put this book together and it's called Al Fawaid, meaning the uh, book he puts together some beneficial points. Um, <clears throat> so really what this book is, um, so sometimes the ulama, the scholars, um, at times they, they sit and they contemplate and they think about things. And sometimes those thoughts are random. So for example, an, an alim may be studying a particular issue and or memorizing or you know reviewing a particular issue <clears throat> which requires research and so on and so forth but then there are times when an alim is just sitting back and he's just contemplating about things maybe he's traveling maybe he's riding on his riding animal and he's traveling uh, maybe he was laying down to you know go off to sleep and um, you know, he's using his time, you know, wisely to contemplate and think about things. And so, uh, some of the ulama, what they've done, instead of thinking about these things and pondering about them and then leaving them uh, and then possibly forgetting them, those those random thoughts or those random contemplations, uh, they wrote they wrote those things down. They wrote those things down, uh, and eventually um, those thoughts became compiled into books. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. So this is one example of that. This is one example. Another example, uh, Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a book called Sayyid al-Khatir. Sayyid al-Khatir. Sayyid is like um, fishing. Like when you're, you know, you go out and go fishing, you're trying to catch something. And al-Khatir is your... Uh, like your thoughts so he's uh, having these thoughts and he's writing them down and he's writing them down placing them in, 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 and putting them on paper uh, so much so to when he had a, a, a lot of these random thoughts he put them together and uh, <clears throat> made a book and so you have these examples of, of these um, books that the ulama have where they have these just random thoughts uh, and, you know, these random thoughts, I'm calling them random thoughts, but in reality, they're actually points of so much benefit that we can sit, or we can sit down and open the books and now read and benefit from them. This the scholar, his just random thought uh, is actually a point of benefit that we now today are extracting uh, benefit from. <clears throat> so anyway, here, uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he has um, al-fawaid in the first fa'ida, the first uh, point of benefit that he brings is um, how to benefit from the Qur'an. The first point of benefit that he brings is how to benefit uh, from the Qur'an. And um, he uses as a base uh, for this discussion a verse from the Qur'an uh, Surah Qaf. Does anybody know what the surah number is for Surah Qaf? 
Surah number 50. Very good. Um, so, Surah Qaf, ayah number 37. Allah Ta'ala, He says, Inna fi thalika la dhikra liman kana lahu qalb wa alqaw liman kana lahu qalb wa huwa shaheed. Um, Allah Ta'ala, He says, Indeed in that, and Allah is referring to that which has preceded in the surah, where Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about um, the previous umam, He speaks about the uh, you know the angels. Allah Subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa Taala speaks about uh, the, the the angels that write down uh, the deeds. He speaks about uh, you know the day of judgment. He talks about. Uh, the people who committed shirk and that they're going to be in the hellfire. Allah spoke about the people who uh, and practice tawheed and they're going to be uh, in Jannah. And then how you know uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, He spoke about you know Jahannam halim talati wa taqulu halmin mazid. You know, Allah will speak to the hellfire and say, "Are you full?" And then um, you no, know, is there more? You know, and so. Allah Azza wa spoke about Jannah and the people of Jannah and what they're going to receive uh, in Jannah. وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيد They shall have everything that they uh, that they please or everything that they want in it and we have more to give. And we have more uh, to give. So all of that, all of that that has preceded, Allah says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ And indeed in that, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ Ladikra, it is a remembrance or is a reminder, uh, meaning it is a lesson. Liman kana lahu qalb, the one who has a heart, aw alqa sam'a wa huwa shaheed, or he lent his ear uh, while he uh, is a witness or while he is present. And so Ibn Qayyim rahimullah, <coughs> from this verse, he extracts several uh, points or several. Uh, things that are required in order for a person to benefit uh, from the Quran. So he says here at the beginning, he says, um, that in order for a person to uh, receive the full effect, in order for an individual to receive the full effect, then it is necessary to have several things. Number one, muathirin muqtadin, that it has to have a muathir, something that is going to uh, be doing the affecting. If going to be affected, then, uh, then there has to be something that is going to cause it uh, to have an effect on it. So the first thing you need is a mu'athir, is that which is going to have an effect. Then he says, mahal qabil, a place that leave the effect. Right? Uh, then he says, وَشَرْطٍ لِحُصُولِ الْأَثَرِ Then a condition, the condition for, for the effect to take place. And then he says, انتفاق المانع انتفاق المانع the removal of that which will prevent the effect from taking place. Uh, and so, <coughs> so what do you mean? So the, he extracts these points right here from this ayah. So the the muathir, that which is going to be doing the affecting, uh, is the Quran, and he bring, that's in nafivalika, indeed in that, that in that is pointing to that which is going to have the effect, which is the Qur'an. In um, ذَلِكَ Referring to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. And so, that is the mu'athir. That is the, 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 the Qur'an is that which is going to be causing the effect. Mahal um, qabil, A place that is going to be accepting the, that, that effect it has to take place somewhere. And so, where does the effect take place? In the heart. Allah says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٍ That 
And <coughs> excuse me. Indeed, in that is a reminder or remembrance for the one who has a heart. For the one who has a heart. Uh, meaning the one who has a heart that is alive. The one who has a heart that is alive. Now Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, if anybody uh, reads any of his books, you'll, you'll know that in, in multiple books, Ibn Qayyim, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's always uh, he, he's speaking uh, at length about uh, the hearts and the different types of hearts. Um, especially one of the books that he wrote is called Igatha to the Hafan. Um, it's a very good book. Uh, I don't know that it's in English or not. I, I, I think I remember someone translating it. Allah knows best. Uh, but if, if the brothers who speak Arabic, it's an extremely good book. Um, lots of benefit. And the first, a large portion of the, of the front of the book, or the beginning of the book, he's discussing uh, the different types of hearts. And he breaks the hearts down into three types. Uh, he says that the first type is the heart that is alive. And that is the heart that is filled with Iman. Uh, and is filled with Tawheed. And then he said that second type of heart is the heart that is sick. <coughs> where that heart is a heart that uh, it, has, uh, it has Iman. It has Iman. Uh, however, um, it is also filled with uh, sin and transgression. The heart is mixed. The sick heart is the heart that is mixed with uh, Iman. And it also has in it sin and transgression. And so that he describes as this, a heart that is sick. Then he talks about the third heart, which is the heart that is dead. And that is the heart of that is filled with uh, kufr. It's filled with disbelief. It is filled with shirk. Uh, this is a heart that is, uh, that is dead. And so... Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah when he mentions in fi dhalika la dhikra liman kana lahu qalb indeed in, uh, in that is a reminder or a remembrance for the one who has a heart uh, meaning the one who has a heart that is alive <coughs> has a heart that is alive uh, because the one who has a heart that is sick uh, or is dead then that heart is not necessarily the place that is going to be well received. Uh, the reminder and the remembrance is not going to be well received. And the reason for that is because the heart, when the sins, uh, when a person sins, uh, then there are spots that are placed on the person's heart. Nukta tun suludat, the Prophet the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that إِذَا أَذْنَبَ الْعَبْدُ That if the, the slave, if he, if he sins or when he sins, then, uh, then a black spot is placed on his heart. فَإِن تَابَ سُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ Then if he repents, then his heart is wiped clean. When زَادَ زَادَتْ When زَادَ زَادَتْ I mean, if he continues in the sin, or if he continues in the transgression, then the black spot will... Uh, it will increase Hatta ya'lua qalbu Tudan Hatta ya'lua qalbu Ya'lua qalba Until it is It takes over the heart <coughs> Until it takes over the heart And so when this takes place um, Then the heart becomes sealed The heart it becomes sealed And so At that point It becomes extremely difficult for anything to penetrate uh, into that heart. It becomes difficult for anything to penetrate into that heart. And so the first thing um, we would extract from this, if we want to benefit from the Quran, then the first thing we would say is that we need, we would have to, if we truly want to benefit, the first thing we need to do is to purify our hearts. Uh, purify our hearts. Uh, Tawheed and purify our hearts with uh, the Sunnah and repent from the sins or the transgressions uh, that we may be uh, involving ourselves in. Uh, because if we truly want to benefit from the Quran, then we have to have a heart that is able to receive that benefit. 
You know, because the Quran is recited to many people. You know, the, the, kuffar, the kuffar of Quraysh, uh, they used to hear, the Prophet Wasallam used to recite the Quran, and they, they, they knew some of the Quran. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he went to the Kaaba and recited Surah Al-Rahman. And they heard the Quran. And so, uh, it is not like they didn't hear anything of the Quran. So why, why didn't they, what was it that, that why didn't they benefit why didn't they just hear the Quran and then and, and, and take the reminder and the remembrance? Because it was the issue of their hearts. That the kufr, the shirk, the vulm, the oppression. All of that has an effect on how you receive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions also in different places in the Quran that there's that there's seals that gets put. A person will reach to a certain point where the eyes get covered up, they can't see the truth. Their ears get sealed. And they can't, and the heart gets locked, and nothing is able to penetrate. And so, if we truly want to uh, benefit uh, from the Quran, then we have to uh, work on our hearts. We have to work on our hearts, and we have to uh, we have to protect our hearts from that which will cause any filth. Or cause any uh, 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 any harm or any sicknesses. We have to protect our hearts by making sure that we're not putting ourselves into positions that are going to have negative impact on our hearts. <coughs> and so, from the things that impact us negatively, as far as our hearts are concerned, is when we're in places where the remembrance of Allah is removed. When we're in a place where the remembrance of Allah is removed, uh, then this is going to have a negative impact on our hearts. Uh, just you know, by lack of hearing Allah's name, I'm not saying that you you know that you have to always be listening to lectures, or you always have to walk around with a mushaf in your hand, you know, reading the Quran all day, every day. I'm not saying that, but you know, being in an environment where you hear Allah's name. Or pe around when you're around people who say MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, you yourself are saying Subhanallah. When you're around people that say InshaAllah, but you know, the name of Allah is is mentioned. Allah's name is 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 mentioned, and this helps because the believer, you know, maybe sometimes you don't even realize that when you hear Allah's name, something happens. Something happens when you hear Allah's name. You get reminded. And so the more you're around when people who are praising Allah, uh, you know, magnifying and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then you're, you're reminded and it does something for your heart. <coughs> but imagine you go, you pray Fajr, you pray Salat al-Fajr, and then at 6, let's say we're praying at 6.30, and then Salat al-Dhuhr is at 2 o'clock, and you go from 6.30 to 2 o'clock and Allah has not crossed your mind once. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not crossed your mind one time. That is, that is a very scary uh, scenario to be in where you're all those hours. There's no astaghfirullah. There's no alhamdulillah. There's no mashaAllah. There's no subhanallah. There's no Allahu Akbar. There's no, there's no, there's no. There's no sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, eight hours, <coughs> almost eight hours where a person is not hearing Allah's name day in and day out. This is going to have an effect on a person. It's going to have an effect on the person in their heart, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, in the Qur'an, Allah says, uh, before this ayah, Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ فَاسْعَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَر when the call to prayer is made on Friday, then race to the remembrance of 
dhikr of Allah. Pay attention. Raise to the remembrance of Allah. Allah called the khutbah what? Dhikr. Right? Raise to the, to the dhikr of Allah, to the remembrance of Allah. Now, I want to keep this in our minds. That the khutbah, all right, is Allah called it the remembrance. Fas'aw uh, dhikrillah. In race, so race to the remembrance of Allah. Okay? Wadar uh, al and leave off trading. Thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamun. That is better for you if you only knew. Okay, what does Allah say next? Fa'idha qudiya til salatu. So, and once the salah is over, once the salah is over, we were now just the dhikr of Allah. Right? We're in the masjid. In the dhikr of Allah, right? Because Allah called the khutbah what? Dhikr. He called it the dhikr of Allah. We're, we just now, فَإِذَا قُضِيَ salatu. Once the salah is over, meaning salat al-jumu'ah, once the salat is over, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go off into the earth. وَبْتَغُوا فَإِذَا قُضِيَ تِلْصَلَاتُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ And seek out from the bounties of Allah. Right? Now we just left the dhikr. And Allah tells us to leave from the salat, to go out in the earth seeking His bounties. And do what? وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And remember Allah much that you may be successful. We just left the dhikr of Allah. And Allah is telling us, leave out of, from the dhikr, and while you are on the earth, Spreading out, seeking Allah's bounty, meaning go out, seek your sustenance, do your job, do your business, uh, uh, go out, drink your tea, drink your coffee, go home, get married, or if you're already married, you know, enjoy your wife, enjoy your kids. While you're doing all of this, at the same time, remember Allah much. Remember Allah what? Kathiran. La'allukum tuflihun. In order that you may be successful. And so, we find it's very important that when we are living our lives, that we don't remove, we don't remove uh, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make like religion or tadayun or religiosity is something that we do in the masjid. <coughs> like we come to the masjid, we want to be religious, we want to remember Allah, we put on our thobe and we go down to the masjid. Alhamdulillah, we've done our dhikr for today. And then we leave out the masjid and, you know, this is something different. Is our, this is our life now. This is our job. This is our business. This has nothing to do with religion. Say la. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us that the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal has to be infused into our lives. Our remembrance of Allah is infused in our lives. It is infused in our work. It is infused in our education. You know, when we are spending time with our family, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infused in that. Uh, even in the points uh, where we're spending time of intimacy with our wives, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Taught us to make dua at this time, the time when we are closest and most intimate uh, with our families. Uh, there's a dua that we've been taught to say. Why? Because even at this time, even at this time, it's a time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To sleep, remembering Allah. Waking up, remembering Allah. All of this is necessary to make sure that we keep our hearts pure, especially in the society that we live in. Because the society that we live in does not assist us in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, when, when I was, uh, the, I spent time uh, overseas, Alhamdulillah, one of the things that I found was beneficial um, in being overseas is that the society helps you remember Allah. The society itself helps you remember Allah. Why? Because you go down to get some eggs from the baqala, which is like the little corner store, you go down to get some eggs, the baqal, the, the person who's in charge of the little store, he's Muslim, you walk in, salamu alaykum, wa alaykum salam, kayfa halukum, 
Alhamdulillah. Right? Allah ala kulli shayin ala kulli shayin qadir. Alhamdulillah asbahna wa lillahi alhamd. You know all these different things you are Allah. You hear the adhan. You hear the adhan. Uh, you even get pulled over by the police officer. Right? If you get pulled over by the police officer, the police officer says to you, Assalamu alaikum. Right? <laughs> right? So you, you have the society itself helps in this regard. I'm not going to say that it, it provides everything that is needed. I'm not going to say that. But it does help in this regard. But where we live at here, it is possible for a person, if he himself doesn't uh, consciously mention Allah's name, he can go eight hours, nine hours, and Allah's name will not be mentioned. He go eight hours, nine hours, Allah's name is not mentioned. He listens to a radio program, they don't mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He watches a documentary on TV, they don't mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He goes into the store, they don't mention Allah's name. Right? He goes into work, they don't mention Allah's name. They go, into, you know, go to a school, they don't mention Allah's name. Sit out and talk with his neighbor, there's no mention of Allah's name. And so this will have a negative effect uh, on our hearts. So the point here uh, is the Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah is here in this point is saying that uh, from the things that are necessary in order to um, receive the benefit of the Quran and to be uh, have uh, to be affected by the Quran, then you have to have what we call what he calls mahal qadir, a place that is going to receive that benefit, and that is the heart. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala, He says in the Quran, uh, la yanfa'u malun wa la banun illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim." The day that. Um, no uh, wealth or any children will be of any benefit, right? Meaning on the day of judgment, your kids, your wealth will not be of any benefit. Illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim, except the one who has come uh, to Allah with a heart that is salim. Now, the, the Ibn Al Qayyim, rahimahullah, one of the things he mentions about this ayah uh, is that Allah said bi qalbin salim, and He did not say qalb salim. Does anybody know the difference between qalbun salim wa qalbun salim? Even it's the same sa la ma sin lam mim. It's the same root. It's the same root verb, uh, which means like to be saved or to be uh, to be safe. Um, but Allah did, said qalbun salim, and He did not say qalbun salim. Does anybody know the difference between the two words? Uh, okay, so so the word salim is ala wazn fa'il, which is uh, we call it al wazn mubalagha, right? Which you're exactly right. Uh, both of you are right that uh, it it shows istimra con continuously that its safety is continuous, right? So a heart that is salim is, is just in the moment, right? Is in the moment. It is safe in the moment because it can be salim in one moment and not in another, right? But a heart then it's continuous. It doesn't, it doesn't have uh, like breaks where sometimes it's, it's, it's free and safe and then other times it's not. Right? That's so Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah point <coughs> that Allah said bi qalbin salim that that the, 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 the salama is is mulazima lil qalb that the that this safety, this 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 um, it is attached, right, very good. That's a that's a good the, the, the cleanliness is attached to this heart. Like in the beginning of the day, the end of the day, the middle of the day, you're gonna find that the safety <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no 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 leave, leave. it's good it's good it's good um, the safety and security is attached to this heart and it's in his da'im 
meaning it is continuous, that it doesn't leave. Uh, and so Allah says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except the one who comes to Allah with a heart that the, the safety, the security, the cleanliness is attached to this heart. That it, is, it was constantly a part of this heart. Um, and so it is important for us to strive to obtain this type of heart. The heart that is constantly in a state of cleanliness, constantly in a state of purity, and whether it's in the daytime, in the nighttime, when we're sleeping, we should be striving to have this heart that is clean and is pure, uh, and it is not infected with the diseases of, of, of doubt or the diseases of shirk, the diseases of ma'asiyah, the disease of, of, of sin and transgression. So Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah, he says <coughs> um, that he said that in order to take the benefit, the maximized benefit, you have to have that which is going to be giving the effect, which we said was the Quran. That, you know, having to have a place that's going to receive this effect, that is the heart. The condition of receiving. So we have the Quran, we have a place to put the effects of the Quran, which is the heart, but now we need, we need the condition of receiving that effect, we need that to be present. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, oh, shaheed. Oh, that he's actually paying attention. He has to be listening, like paying attention. When he gave his ear. Like he's, he's not just, the Quran is not just, he's in front of him where he's just kind of going through it and reading through it like he reads, you know, the Sunday paper. Uh, you know, looking for deals um, and coupons and stuff in the, in the Sunday paper. That he's actually he's actually paying it. He's, he's he's paying strict attention. He's paying strict attention, and this is required. If we want to take benefit from the Quran, then we have to when we when it's being recited or when we are reciting, then we have to be paying attention. We have to be paying attention, and we have to be pondering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Are they not uh, pondering over the Qur'an or do the hearts have a seal on them? And so it's incumbent upon us that when the Qur'an is being recited or when we are reciting the Qur'an, that it is very necessary for us to be paying attention. We have to be paying attention and pondering, uh, not just reciting just for the sake of saying, how I've recited, right? We have to be paying attention. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, عَمَّ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ عَنِ النَّبَئِ الْعَظِيمِ you know, What are they asking about? About the great news. Like, we ponder over that. Like, what, is, what does this mean? Allah revealed this. Allah spoke this. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just speak, He, has, he doesn't speak for abath. It's not just a waste of time. Allah Azza wa Jalla revealed His book for a purpose. Inna anzalna ilayk al kitab bil haq that we reveal to you. Indeed, we reveal to you the book in truth. And so this book has has been sent down by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in truth. So if it's been sent down in truth, and everything in it is truth, then we need to ponder over the meanings of these verses. If we truly want to, if we truly desire to have an effect on what the Quran to affect us and want to take benefit and extract benefit uh, from this book, then we have to be paying attention and we have to be pondering about the truth that Allah has, uh, has revealed. Um, it's time for the event. We can call the event, inshallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. 
شلو لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله شلو أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله شلو أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله حي على الصلاة لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله حي على الفلاح لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله حي على الفلاح لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة وصلاة القائمة أنت محمد الوسيل والفضيل وبعث المقام المحمود الذي وعدته سواء الإمام ابن القيم رحمه الله he said that uh, in order to receive the maximum benefit from the Quran, you have to have that which is going to have an effect, uh, which that in that which is going to have an effect is the Quran. You have to have a place uh, that the Quran is going to affect, and which is the heart. Uh, then the shab, he mentioned, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah, al qasamah wa huwa shahid, that he uh, lends his ear, that the condition is that he has to be paying attention. He has to be paying attention and pondering over uh, over the Quran and intifa al mani and removing that which is going to prevent uh, the benefit, which is a uh, dhuhul or a uh, person being negligent, um, person being um, he's not paying attention or person is not pondering and he's not. Uh, he's ghafil, he's unaware, the Qur'an is being recited and he's not really, his mind is in other places. Um, so this is, uh, you know, this is what I wanted to mention um, from what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said about how to benefit from the Qur'an. And I said this book, uh, Al-Fawaid, is very beneficial, mashallah. Um, and he just brings point, you know, just random points. Um, point number one, point number two, point number three, they're just random uh, random points. Each point, mashallah, is, is a point of benefit. Um, this was the first point that he mentioned in his book. He opened up uh, his book of beneficial points with this uh, point of benefit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to bless him and to raise him in Jannah. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him of his sins and to make all that he has left behind for us uh, as good deeds in his uh, mizan. Um, does anybody have any uh, questions? <laughs> MashaAllah. No? Khair. No. <laughs> Now, before you go, I wanted to, I wasn't here for the khutbah today. <coughs> I was in Claremont. So I wasn't able to make the announcement about the Salat times. So before I forget, um, Salat al, uh, we're going to be changing Salat al-Asr and Salat al-Aisha. Salat al-Asr will be at 5 p.m. and Salat al-Aisha at 15, inshallah, on Sunday. So on Sunday, Salat al-Asr will be at 8 um, no, um, five. Yes, yeah, Salat al Asr will be at five, and Salat al Aisha will be at eight fifteen. Inshallah. Now, Fadl Shaykh. Huh? Verse number twenty-eight. Fadl. Ewa. Huh? So in Surah Qaf, yeah. Ayat 28, it says, it says, but what, what's the verse? Uh, should I? Ayat 28. Uh, that is ten, uh, nine ayats before. Oh no, that's not Surah Qaf, that's Surah Kaf. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Wasfir Nafsaka Ma'aladina Yadu'una Rabbahum. Right, uh huh. 
Right. What, what's what's the what is what is the question now? Question was uh, the, the Allah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saying uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like keep yourself the morning and evening with uh, them whoever. No, keep yourself patient along with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening, meaning that uh, this is uh, and 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 no and Allah Taala knows best. Um, this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in turn to the ummah, right? Because he is our, um, our example to follow. So if the, Allah azza wa jalla has commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with an act, then unless it is something specific, we have an evidence that is specific for him, then it is, that command is also for, uh, for the ummah as well. So... In this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal is ordering the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with patience and be with these individuals. Because <coughs> at that time and, and, and you know there was a, at that time, um, you know, the people who remembered Allah Azza wa Jal in the morning and the evening, uh, you know, they weren't uh, the people of, uh, of of popularity, they weren't the people of for the most part, they weren't the people of Quwa. Uh, and so uh, this is during the Meccan period where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Afwan, where, um, you know, the Muslims did not have uh, strength and, and quwa. And so Allah Azza wa orders the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be, pr to be patient and be with these individuals, right? Be patient and be with these uh, individuals. Uh, don't leave off those who believe in Allah and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go be with those other people who don't remember Allah right don't leave off uh, salam wa rahmatullah don't leave off the companionship of those who are in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and be with those who are uh, who are either a, not uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or disbelievers or and so forth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to keep himself be patient upon this be patient and be with those who believe be with those who remembering Allah azza wa jal day and night and this uh, is obvious um, you know, has, has its obvious benefits that when you're in the companionship of those who are remembering Allah and calling upon Allah morning and evening then you're going to be in the company of people who are going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're going to be in the company of the people who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala knows best. And I want to say that um, this issue here, uh, this issue here is one that is extremely important for our children. Um, the issue of keeping them in the companionship with people who are going to remind them of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though ourselves as adults, we may realize the importance of the remembrance of Allah. So, salam wa rahmatullah. So maybe one of us will have the Quran playing in our car when we're driving. Maybe we'll make istighfar. Or maybe we'll be listening to lectures. Uh, but our children, uh, we need to make sure that they are being reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Um, and we need to you know, seek forgiveness. We need to remind them to praise Allah. We need to remind them to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also need to, when, we, when we're choosing for our children, friends, and, and as, as fathers, and I tell fathers this all the time, we are the ones who choose the friends for our children. They do not come home and tell us, this is my friend. La, you know, that friend is, needs to, an, an, a, a parent approval. That friend needs a parent approval. And if the parent does not approve, then he's not a friend. So, you know, our children need to understand that they don't come home and just, you know, dish out orders. Oh, by the way, Baba, uh, I'm going out with my friend. Your friend who? My friend Mike. Friend Mike? Who's Mike? Yeah, it's my friend. No, we need to have an approval so that we can make sure that our children are being uh, affected positively by the people that they're in the company with. So that they don't spend 10 hours, you know, 7 hours, you know, you go and spend the night at someone's house where there, there's the whole night they're with them. There's no remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no salat, nothing. Uh, and so we have to make sure that we're protecting 
uh, our children from al-ghafla, that we're protecting them from being unaware and being in a position where they're not remembering Allah, because this can lead to their hearts becoming hard, and then that leads them down the path of going astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our children. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Have approval before friendship or before going out? No, before friendship. هذا والله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد